Welcome in, listener. You're listening to a segment from the Slump Buster podcast with Juju and Dre. Find the full episode on Spotify, iTunes, the Google Play Store, or our YouTube channel. Enjoy. Let's go into it. It's time for the MLB postseason talk. I'll take the lead here. Obviously, it's more of the baseball guy on the show. Where we're at right now. Earlier this week, the Rays, with their lowest payroll in baseball, managed to pull off a win against the Oakland Athletics. So they're moving on to face the Houston Astros. Decent little series. Both kind of like teams that had to really build up to the, through the draft. Good for the Rays. Good for them to be making it through it. Oakland A's have an eight-game losing streak in winner-take-all games going back to 2000. So money ball isn't exactly working out for them these days. In the other wildcard game in the NL, the Nationals managed to pull off a win against the Brewers, 4-3. They had to come back in the bottom of the eighth with a three-run rally. It all started with the terrible, terrible error by their right fielder Grisham to overrun the ball, which allowed the... Brewers to score three runs on a bases loaded, what should have been just a single. Terrible error. You hate to see it. Either way, the Nationals are moving on. And Bryce Harper, who we talked about last week, is probably kicking himself. Well, I guess, never mind. He can't be kicking himself too hard with a 13-year, $330 million deal. <laughs> yeah. No, I would not be complaining about that much money. What I really find interesting is, you know, the Rays, you said, have the lowest uh, paid roster in the MLB right now, right? Yep, absolutely. So they have the lowest current payroll in baseball right now, sitting at a whopping, let's see if I have it here, at a whopping $53 million. So so your $84 million that you're paying Kirk Cousins, you could, you could buy the entire race. <laughs> you could buy the Tampa Bay Rays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I just find it so interesting because generally in sports, right, the argument is always, oh, it's the teams that are the big market teams that can spend a lot of money, right? And that's why there's salary caps and all this stuff. But with baseball, it almost seems like it's always the opposite where you're not paying players so much. And I think it's just because of the value, right? Like the guys that demand that much money and a ton of money, right? The $300 million and stuff like that. You can get comparable performance. You won't necessarily get to the level of performance that they're at, but you could get comparable performance for guys that are much cheaper. And so I think it sort of pays to build through the draft or to have lower paid players that are almost just as good as some of these higher paid players. But I just find it really interesting that that baseball is one of those sports where you don't have to have a bunch of money and you could still be much more successful than the guys that are getting paid a whole bunch. Yeah. Well, the Nationals, they're playing the Dodgers right now. And the Dodgers are about one of the most interesting mixes of a team that has money and has also built up through the drafts. Obviously, I'm a Giants fan, so I measure my season in two distinct ways. One, are the Giants good and have they won the World Series? No. Option B, did the Dodgers lose? Those are the two measurements in which I gave success for my MLB fandom. Unfortunately, the Dodgers are here sitting as the number one seed in the National League and they won 106 games during the regular season. Vegas has them as a plus 250 right now to win the whole thing. The thing I consider with it, this series, they they're already have a 1-0 lead against the Nationals, by the way, they beat them 6-0 to the previous night, is if you keep putting yourself in the World Series enough times, keep putting yourself in the postseason, eventually you're going to pull down a victory, right? You would think so. I mean, how many years in a row have, have the Dodgers made the postseason? Well, they've won seven straight National League West division titles. Okay, yeah, that's very impressive for, for any sport. But they haven't won the World Series, though, right, in that same amount of time? No, they've been to the World Series the last two years, lost it to the Astros mm-hmm. in an epic seven games, and then they got the hell beat out of them by the Boston Red Sox last year. Yeah. See, and I would think that after a certain point, right, like just being there enough times, you would figure that, you know, your team would have enough of not only just the talent, but experience to be able to pull out a World Series win. I would guess that they could – possibly do it this year I would think that they would be able to but what do you do with a team that like their ceiling is being runner-ups in the World Series like is that acceptable to you if you're an owner well I think in most markets it would absolutely be but when you're considering you're playing in the LA market where the fans are very fickle even in a good season for the Dodgers or a good decade for the Dodgers in terms of how their team has been performing and winning the division consistently year after year we still see the cliche Dodgers fans showing up in the fifth inning constantly or leaving the games early year after year. So that hasn't really changed much. So I think the Dodgers, after about a 30-year dry spell of not winning the World Series, are probably due. 
for it. And like I said, it pains me to say it, but they're probably due to win this, especially they have so many talented players on that roster. They're big three in their rotation. They have Hungjin Ryu. They had Walker Bueller, who pitched last night, and then Clayton Kershaw, who pitches tonight. We're recording here on a Friday. It's going to be interesting to see how Kershaw performs. He's been much maligned for his lack of success in the postseason. 24 career starts, 9-10 and 10 record, 4.32 ERA. Another shocking stat I noticed, his home runs per nine inning rate in a career, in a whole career for his regular season performances, 0.7 home runs per nine innings. But when it comes to the postseason, that number kicks up to 1.3, so almost double. I don't know if it's a mental hurdle that Clayton Kershaw has to overcome to get this team over the hump, because you need at least three starters to consistently win in the Major League postseason. Sometimes four, but mostly those top three guys are how you measure your success in a series. Will Clayton Kershaw be able to carry the load as he's not as relied on as he has been in years past to be the staff ace? Yeah. So I guess you know baseball more than I do. So if Kershaw, let's say, can't perform in the postseason, and we've seen athletes in other sports, right, that have gotten crucified for for just that, how easy is it to trade a player? And would you think about trading a player like a Kershaw, who brings a lot of value, right? His stock might be a little bit high, but you know he's never going to be the one to get you those wins in the postseason and get you a World Series. I think it's an impossible decision for the Dodgers to make because Kershaw is such a fan favorite over there. Mm -hmm. Regardless of his postseason lack of success, year after year, he's been one of the most consistent performers. Only in recent years, though, has he suffered from a little bit of back injuries, which back injuries in baseball are kind of derailing because they can be a couple-day thing or they could be a couple-month thing. There's... Mm -hmm. There's a lot of in-between when it comes to those type of injuries when you start hearing them pop up. Would I trade Clayton Kershaw? Part of the problem is he's one of the highest paid pitchers in baseball right now. So you have to, if you're a team, you have to eat that contract. And then if you're the Dodgers, obviously you want something good in return. There's not really a great trade partner. I think right now, he's essentially their number three behind Ryu and Walker Bueller. They're not in a position where they have to, like it's a thing that needs to be done in this coming off season or even into next season. I think that that's a situation where you just let it ride and you hope that this is the year that they finally pull it down. We'll see how he performs, obviously, in the second game against the Nationals. For all this talk of his lack of postseason success, he could throw a no-hitter tonight and make me look like an idiot. Yeah, and maybe he finally has that breakthrough, right? Like you said. Moving into the next series, so the Cardinals, they beat the Braves 7-6 Thursday, and then the Braves bounced back earlier this morning on Friday, tying the series at 1-0 with a 3-0 victory. One of the noticeable things I learned about that game in Game 1 is the Braves are a very young team. That's probably what's going to derail them more than anything. So Ronald Acuna, who's one of their big stars, he had a moment in there where he was dogging it on what he thought was a home run ball. He could have made it a much bigger inning. He thought the ball was long gone out of the ballpark. He had to settle for a double because he was walking down the first baseline looking at the ball. First off, fundamental baseballs, don't do that. If if there's ever any doubt that you think that the ball might stay in the park, you're running your ass off. That's a basic coach thing. I'm sure his coach gave him an earful for that one, especially because he didn't help himself anymore because he got doubled up on a liner. So basically the ball was hit the, the shortstop on a line drive. He ran off the second base and got tagged up for a double play to end the inning. Following that, the Braves, who were up 3-1 at that point, ended up giving that two-run lead back, and the Cardinals tied it up in the top of the eighth. So brutal, brutal change of events. <laughs> Maybe he just liked to admire his work, you know, just see the ball floating in the air a little bit, you know, take his time, get into, get into first. Yeah, that sounds better in theory than it does in practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying go out and do that. Please don't, right? So yeah. all you aspiring baseball players, do not just sit there and admire your work while, while you watch the ball, you know, float so right, through the air. Yeah, so right now the series is tied up at one game apiece. The Cardinals, with that win in game one, still managed to take down home field advantage. Who do you think wins this series? Give me a quick prediction. I'm going to actually say the Braves. So they just tied it up. And like you said, they had a pretty good lead going into the eighth inning. And I think the Braves right now just are showing like that they can be successful and can, you know, come out on top. So I'll take them. Yeah, I I mean, I love how the Cardinals have been one of the most consistent franchises in baseball over the last few decades. But I do want to see the Braves prop back up to dominance. They have one of the most young, exciting rosters in baseball right now with players like Ronald Acuna, Freddie Freeman. And... I think it'd be interesting to see a new contender pop up for the next 10 years. 
in the next series, the Houston Astros, they are hosting those Rays that we talked about earlier with their lowest payroll in baseball. Now, the problem with when you win those wild card games is a lot of times you burn your ace. And I forgot to mention it too when it came to the Washington Nationals versus the Dodgers. So the Nationals, unfortunately, they had to use both Matt Scherzer and Steven Strasburg in that game against the Brewers. They burned their top two aces to try and pull down that one victory. Makes sense. It's a winner play all game to move into the next round. You got to do what you got to do. But when it comes back to the Rays, they had to burn their ace, Charlie Morton, and then they got beat 6-2 against the Astros in game one of the NLDS. The Astros are going to be throwing out there a amazing pitching staff. They have Justin Verlander. Game one, he opens up with seven scoreless innings. Then in game two, they're going to be throwing out Garrett Cole. Game three, Zach Greinke, who they acquired at the Major League Baseball trade deadline. Since he's been acquired as a Houston Astro, he's went 8-1 and one with a 3.02 ERA. So this staff is amazing. Between Cole and Verlander, they've combined for over 600 strikeouts. We talked about how home runs are up in baseball. Strikeouts are up in baseball, too. But even when you compare that to some of the great greatest pitchers of all time, 300 strikeout seasons are still something. They're amazing when they happen. And when you look down the Houston Astros roster, so right now they're the favorites in Vegas to win this. And it makes sense because it's not just their pitching staff. When you dive a little bit deeper into this series, the Houston Astros were third in the league in home runs for the major league. Leading the team, Albuquerque resident Alex Bregman, 41 home runs. George Springer, 39. Jose Altuve had over 30. Yasmani Gurriel, 30 plus. Jordan Alvarez, the rookie, 27 home runs. Brantley, 22. Correa, 21. Basically, they had seven guys in their roster that managed to put up 20-plus home runs. So this lineup is deadly. They're, they can get you from any point in their lineup. And trying to keep up with their pitching staff is almost impossible. The Rays have been a great story, but I think they're going to get swept in this matchup. Yeah, I totally agree. And the season for baseball is long. And when you have to play extra games more than your opponent, right, and your opponents are coming in fresh, like you said, the Rays had to burn their aces going into the series. So I think the Astros just have the more talented team right now. They just look really good. The Astros have also been one of those teams that has been here in the playoffs several times. That They have that experience. They won the World Series not too long ago. I think it's just a little bit too much power for the Rays to handle. Yeah, great story. Again, shout out to Alex Bregman, Albuquerque resident. Got two former Albuquerqueans on this show, so shout out to my boy. Next matchup up is going to be the Yankees versus the Twins. So this is going to be the one series that hasn't played yet as of this recording. The Yankees have owned the Twins. They have a 10-game winning streak against the Twins in the postseason. They have a 99-37 and record against the Twins overall. And in the postseason, they're 13-2 and against them dating back to 2004. Ownage is ownage. I think that the Yankees are going to pull down this series again. But it is going to be a fun series to watch, actually, though, because if you do love the long ball and if you're a casual viewer like Andre here, number one and number two teams in home runs this season with the Twins 307, Yankees 306. Nelson Cruz has had been a revitalized season at age 39. He has 41 home runs to lead this team. And although the Yankees didn't break 40 home runs themselves, Glaber Torres led the team with 38. Brett I I just want to, so I was looking at all the team stats. Brett Garner had 28 home runs for this team. I didn't believe the baseballs were juiced until I read that. So just to give you a little clarity, Andre, Brett Garner's career home run like high was 21 in 2017, and he never broke 20 before that. Juice balls has a little bit of juice when it comes to looking at that guy's stat line. God, I just remember my grandpa used to hate Brett Garner so much because he used to just be a line to line hitter, just hit it in the gap, never hit for power. And now he comes back with a 28 home run season. (laughs) So the Yankees too are going to benefit from, they've gone a little bit healthy in recent weeks. So Luis Severino, who's their ace, he's back from injury. John Carlos Stannon, who's only played in 18 games in the regular season, he's back even though he's only played limited appearances in September leading into the postseason. So it's going to be interesting to see how he adjusts to the speed of the game coming off injury. And then they also, their catcher, Gary Sanchez, who also had a pretty prolific season himself, he dealt with groin injury in September. So the Yankees are coming a little banged up, but young team in the Twins, I don't think they're going to be able to take advantage. Yeah, I think the Yankees have this. So I would like to see the Twins. I think it would be cool to see them beat a big market team like the Yankees. But like you said, ownage is ownage, right? I I really do think that there is a big brother, little brother effect. We see it all the time in sports in which a team just can't get past the big brother. And in this case, it'll be the Yankees. Now, when it comes to the home run thing, right? Like, I really do think it is something for casual fans to be able to see the top two teams and home runs go against each other. Because that's what everybody likes to watch. And it's fun when you hear the bat 
connect and, and you can see the ball go flying. And to give baseball something, I really do think that hitting a baseball is the hardest thing that you could probably do athletic wise outside of maybe some of physically like running 100 yard dash and under nine seconds or whatever it is the world record it takes so much coordination i got a lot of respect and the fact that these two teams are just continually hitting it out of the park is is fantastic and fun to watch well one of the famous phrases i've always heard is if you throw a baseball player into any other sport at least he'll compete if you throw like a nfl running back with a bat and ball and just tell him to go hit, he's going to struggle a little bit. Again, shout out to baseball. With that said, I guess let's just do a quick rundown because probably by the next time we record, we'll be in the NLCS. Who are the teams you see advancing? I'm going to go Yankees pointed down against the Twins. I'm going to say the Astros pull it down against the Rays. In the NL, hard to go against the Dodgers against the Nationals, so I'm going to go with them. And I'm actually going to go against you on this one. I'm going to say the Cardinals do it. Just if the Braves keep making these rookie mistakes like Acuna did, I don't think they're going to be able to keep up. Okay. Yeah, I've I've pretty much got mostly all the same picks that you do. I've got the Yankees having the big brother effect. I've got the Astros also because that's my mom's favorite team, uh, her being (laughs) from Houston pretty much. So I got to go for them. Uh, My family would hate me if I cheered against them. Let's see, the Dodgers, I've got them in this round. And then I'm going to take the Braves, though. I think they got good young talent. They at least came back and tied up the series, and then they've shown that they can get get ahead in some games. And so I think they, they can continue that throughout the series. Awesome. Well, let's hope you're better at picking baseball than you are at picking the NFL. 